In this video, I want to use calculus 3 or, or multivariable calculus to prove AMGM inequality. And what is AMGM inequality? AM stands for arithmetic mean, arithmetic mean, and GM stands for geometric mean. And these are two different ways to find major measures of center, specifically mean. For arithmetic mean, let's say you're given quantity 2, 3, and 4. To find arithmetic mean, you add up all the numbers and divide by how many numbers you have. In this case, you have 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 9, divided by 3, which gets you 3. For geometric mean, you multiply all the numbers together and you take cube root of the numbers. In this case, it's cube root because you have three numbers. If you have four numbers, you're going to take fourth root. If you have five numbers, you're going to take fifth root. If you have two numbers, you're going to take square root. You take nth root of the numbers, of the product of numbers, where n is the how many numbers you have. So in this case, you get cube root of two times three times four, which is 24. And you may realize this is smaller than cube root of 27 which is 3. So we have, in this case, arithmetic mean of 3 being greater than geometric mean, which is less than 3. And, in, and it actually turns out, in every single case with positive numbers, with positive numbers, arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to geometric mean. And this is what we are going to try to prove today. And how are we going to prove this? Let's say you're given numbers a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and let's say you have n of them, a sub n. And you, f you find arithmetic mean and geometric mean, and we want to show arithmetic mean is larger or equal to geometric mean. And let's, let's define a function. Let's define a function a sub 1, a sub 2, all the way to a sub n, to be the product, to be the product of all the n numbers. So let's define it to be this. And you have a constraint. You have a constraint, which is s, which is when you add up all the numbers, I'm using a, a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 all the way to a sub n, you get s. You have to always get certain sum. And what do we want to do? We want to maximize this product. We want to find a way to maximize this product. And once we maximize it, you are going to see a way to prove AMGM inequality. So let's so this is our constraint and this is and this is our constraint. This is our function that we want to maximize. So let's let's do it. And how I'm going to do it, I'm going to use the method of Lagrange Lagrange Lagrange's method, Lagrange multiplier. And how I'm going to do it, I'm going to find I'm going to find del f, and I'm going to set it equal to lambda or log, Lagrange's multi, Lagrange's multiplier at times del del. Let's let this function be g, g of a sub one, a sub two, all the way to a sub n times del g. You are going to find gradient of f, and you're going to set it equal to lambda times gradient of g, as Lagrange pr proposed at a very young age, in fact. And you're going to see what this thing tells you about maximum and minimum. So let's do it. We have, let's find del f. Our del f is going to be when you differentiate with, when you partially differentiate with respect to a sub 1, you get a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, all the way to a sub n. When you partially differentiate with respect to a sub 2, you get a sub 1, a sub 3, a sub 4, all the way to a sub n. When you partially differentiate with respect to a sub 3, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 4, all the way to a sub n. Now, what is gradient of g? Gradient of g is actually pretty simple. When you partially differentiate with respect to a sub 1, you get 1 and bunch of zeros, so just 1. When you partially differentiate with respect to a sub 2, you get 1, and so on, and you have n ones. So we have each of these each of these terms, each of these terms being equal to being equal to Lagrange's constant times times 1. So we have a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub n being equal to this term times lambda, times lambda. And we also have a sub 1, a sub 3, a sub 4, all the way to a sub n, being equal to this terms times lambda. And you have a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 4, a sub n, being equal to lambda, and obviously this goes on. 
and you have n of these. So what, what's, what's going on? Now let's look at these two. Since both of them has lambda, you can, you, you, what do you know? You know you can set this equation and this equation equal to each other. And what's going to happen? A sub 3's are going to cancel out, A sub 4's are going to cancel out, A sub 5's, all the way up to A sub n. And you get the equation A sub 1 is equal to A sub 2 based on these two equations. Now let's look at these two equations. What's going to happen? You, the A sub 1's are going to cancel out. A sub 4's are going to cancel out, and A sub 5's, and so on. So you get A sub 2 is equal to A sub 3. And this thing is going to go on. And what's this telling you? This thing is telling you the maximum. The maximum occurs. The maximum occurs when A sub 1 is equal to A sub 2, which is equal to A sub 3, which is equal to A sub 4, all the way to A sub n. So the maximum is going to occur when all the numbers, when all the numbers are going to be going to equal each other. So what's that telling you? That's telling you the maximum, let me rewrite the function, let me rewrite the function right, right here, our function of a sub 1, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3 all the way to a sub n. The maximum of the function, the maximum of the function is when when you, and this was the product of all the numbers, when everything is equal to a sub 1, or a sub 1 raised to the nth power. And what's our function g of a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, all the way to a sub n, equal at this point? It's equal to n a sub 1's added to each other, or n times a sub 1, or equal to s. And what's this telling you? you? You know g is always equal to s, and in this case, you're adding n a sub 1's together. That's how I got this equation. This thing is telling you a sub 1 is equal to s over n, or this thing is equal to s over n to the n's power. Now what can we, now what can we, what can we figure out from this? You know the maximum of a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, all the way to a sub 1. This thing is product you know this thing is always less than or equal to the maximum of this thing and the maximum of this thing is s over n raised to the nth power and let's take nth root of the entire thing so you have nth root of a sub 1 a sub 2 a sub 3 all the way to a sub n being less than or equal to the sum which is a sub 1 a sub 2 plus a sub 3 all the way to a sub n divided by n and this is exactly amgm inequality arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean so we have we have a, we have just proven amgm inequality and whenever you have inequality it's important to point out when those equality occur if it occurs so when when those equality equality occur and this one is actually pretty obvious it occurs when this thing reaches the maximum of a sub 1 a sub 2 a sub 3 all the way equaling to a sub n then nth root of a sub 1 to the nth power is going to get a sub 1 for gm and our am is going to be n times a sub 1 divided by n which is a sub 1 so equality occurs when every single term is equal to each other